So I've prepared a little basket ready to take to the charity shop tomorrow. It tells everybody their handmade cards and I've put it in a little basket that doesn't matter if I don't get back. Every card is either six by four and individually wrapped in a cello bag or six by six and individually wrapped in a cello bag. On the back of the card, I've written an inscription to say what the card said inside. And that means that, that the customers can come along. I'll show you a selection of the cards I've made. That means that the customers can come along and handle the cards like they would in any supermarket, but the cards don't get damaged. I've done some baby cards. I've done a variety here. You may have seen me showing you some of these cards as I've been making them. I try and make them quite generic. I don't put names on. I don't put happy birthday mum. But sometimes they've got their own themes and are appropriate for the person selecting them. Some are, some, some are suitable for men. My cards look quite feminine, but some I've, I've made sure that uh, they're suitable for men. And as I talk through with you, I just want to talk about some of the considerations that I made and why I decided this selection of cards. Um, this is going to a charity shop. And I think it's important that you develop a rapport with the charity shop. And especially, especially the manager, who is probably the one constant and the one constant in the shop and can make decisions. There are many different volunteers going in, working in the charity shops, but it's the rapport that you need with the manager. And it's important to know that the first thing that they want is they want to sell handmade cards in the first place. Don't try and force something on them that they don't want. The relationship that I've got with the charity shop is I'll make cards for you and bring them in as and when I can do them. I don't take orders, but I do say, uh, do you want a batch of Mother's Day cards? We've got Easter coming up. Will that help you if I make some of those? Have I given you enough time to sell them? I don't try and give them cards that would be out of season. I try and find out whether the previous cards I've made have sold and whether people like them. And the feedback that I get is really important because that tells me what direction I'm going in. I consider what the point of sale will be. So how will it look to the customer? Can the customer see them? Are they, are they at eye height? Are they placed near the till? Do the volunteers know that in addition to the manufactured cards that they're obliged to sell, that there is somebody making handmade cards locally for them and that you generate a demand for them? I do suggest that the 6x6 six six cards that I make sell for perhaps £1.25. I think that's more than reasonable. And that the 6x4 cards perhaps sell for a pound. It's actually up to them, but I think they're worth it. I certainly don't want the cards to sell less than a pound. But if a child comes into a charity shop and says, I want a birthday card for my mum and I've got 35p, please sell them at whatever you think. It's really up to them. The cards are being given from me to them and it's up to them to make a profit. I spoke about gift aid the other day in the UK. 
and gift aid is actually 25%. So because I'm a UK taxpayer, I ask them to claim the money back for the government. Now from this pack of 20 cards, I've worked that the total donation is worth, in real terms, about £28 to them. Now, I'm not getting any money back from these from the charity shop. So I had to work out how can I afford to keep funding my hobby and do it. And which cards are more appropriate to sell on eBay, in which case I can give a, a, a proportion to a charity. And some of that money comes back to me so that I can so that I can replenish my stores. Just going to check my notes here. All of these are single cards. One of the considerations I had was that the postage, especially in the UK, is going up tremendously. So I'm probably going to be photographing and selling my cards in batches of twos or threes because that helps keep the postage costs down for the customers, especially as considering they might be buying cards to put back in the post. That's really important. I'll do a separate video to show you how I prepare my cards for eBay and about the process that I go through for there. But I thought you'd just enjoy seeing the outcome of some of my card making this week. They, they get a bit slippy, these cello bags. So we'll drop those off tomorrow and while we're round in the local community, while we're round in the local community, we'll have a cup of coffee. One thing I do is just make a record of what cards I've donated where and when. That's important for me. I don't want the taxman to think that I'm running a business. I'm not. So. I hope you've enjoyed this little foray into a few considerations for making cards for charities. Some of the principles will apply if you're looking to run a business and you're preparing for a craft sale, a handmade goods sale or a tabletop sale. Do consider that you want your cards to be the best quality that you can produce and they need to look very professional in order to attract the public's attention. And you'd want a card that you'd like to receive yourself. And there's some of the quality standards that I set. There's some of the quality standards I set myself. So I hope you've enjoyed and learned a few things from me, just a few tips along the way of considerations for marketing your cards and I'll speak to you again sometime very soon. For now, it's dark outside. Good night.